G'day Internet, Kale from Wakato here to take you on a tour of environments. Environments are your low-code, no-code framework for creating enterprise-grade change management processes. You can use them to develop, test, and deploy changes to active automation projects. I'm going to take a simple example project and walk you through how you can use environments to manage change. Okay, so here's my workspace. I have a small team here working on mostly customer service automations. Let's start with, where are the environments? Up in the corner here, along with my workspace switcher, you can see that the workspace I'm using includes three environments. The dev environment is where you'll build your projects and do your initial testing and debugging work. The test environment is where you can do more formal QA testing. And the production environment is where you deploy your projects when they're ready to be used. And this is where they'll interact with your real production data. Now, if I switch into the production environment now, you'll see that there are no projects here. We haven't deployed anything to production yet. So that's what I'm going to show you. We'll go through the process of getting a project deployed to production for the first time. So this is the project our team's been working on. The goal is to automatically sync orders between all of my different systems. We have a recipe that picks up orders from Shopify and creates them in NetSuite. A second recipe creates the customers and orders in Zendesk. And a third allows customers to check the status of orders and initiate returns via a support ticket. This is a pretty simple project, but you can see how these recipes work together as a unit and how changes to one affect how the others will work. You can also see that it's important that this works as expected. If these automations fail, we're going to drop orders, lose money, and have unhappy customers. So we need to be able to test it out thoroughly, and we need our production deployment to be stable. So we're going to use environments to create a low-code, no-code change management process for this project. An important part of change management is letting your team work together effectively and to be able to perform their particular roles. We have a team of four working on this project, so let's meet them. John is our workspace admin. He creates the projects, invites the other team members to work on them, and manages their access. Then there's Esther, the project admin. She's going to scope out and plan the project, create the app connections we need to make the project work, and she has the final say on when it's ready for production. And Richard, our builder, he's our process expert. He's going to build the bulk of the actual recipe logic. And finally, Alan, he's our QA tester and he's in charge of making sure the project works as expected. Now, let's look at how we set up this team with role-based access control. In Wakato, you can create roles to describe permissions a user should have and assign a role to each user. Now, with environments, you can assign each user a different role for each environment they have access to. And for this project, John, our workspace admin, will set up three roles. There's a QA role, and this role only has permissions to read and run recipes, not to add, remove, or edit them. So this role is limited to finding errors and bugs. Then there's a builder role. This role can create, delete, and edit recipes, but it can't create new connections. Then finally, an admin role. This role can do everything the builder can do, plus create new connections. This is important because your connections determine where your data can go. We've set up our roles this way so that our builder has total freedom to design the recipes, but they can't just decide to send out sensitive customer data anywhere they want. They can only use the connection set up by the admin, and this helps keep things secure and auditable. Notice that all three of these roles are limited to a subset of projects, so any permissions they have apply only to the projects assigned to them. Now let's apply these roles to our team. Our tester, Alan, only needs the QA role, and he only needs it in the test environment. He has no access to development or production. Richard has the builder role, but only in dev and test. He can build a project, deploy it to test, but he can't make changes to production on his own. And finally, Esther, our admin, has the CS admin role in all three environments. So she's responsible for actually deploying the project to production. So let's look at that first production deployment. We're going to skip over deploying to test because deployment works the same for any environment. We're gonna pick up this project at the point where we've already deployed it to test and Alan has given it the all clear and you can see the test deployment in the log here. So it's time for our first production deployment. 
The account I'm using here is Richard's, our builder. You'll notice that if he tries to deploy this project, he only gets the option to deploy to test. He doesn't get the option to production. We need to get Esther, our project admin, in for the final review. But before we do, I want to quickly show you the connections used by this project. Now, Richard can see these, but he can't edit them. And if we drill down into our Zendesk connection, you'll see that the admins have set it up so it connects to a sandbox instance of Zendesk. This is how we keep projects in dev and test environments from impacting our production data. Okay, Esther's on the case. Now to deploy a project, we just navigate to the deployments tab and click deploy. That kicks off our deployment wizard. And from here, we choose production and we add some notes to the deployment. Now, as the project matures, these notes are really helpful for readability. So you should make a note of what the deployment changes. Here, I'll just say initial production deployment. Now, the wizard will automatically create a list of assets to deploy. If we need to, we can customize it and choose exactly which recipes and connections we want to deploy. But here, we don't need to. The next step, shows us what is going to change in production as a result of the deployment. This also gets more important later, but since this is the first time, every asset is getting created fresh in production. All we need to do is click deploy. And we can go and look at our changes in production. One last important step You'll remember I showed you how our connections all went out to sandbox versions of our apps. Now that's obviously not useful in production. So the first time you deploy a connection to a new environment, it comes across in a disconnected state as you see here. Now we need to connect them to the appropriate production instance of each app. Once we do that, we can set these recipes to active and our project is ready to go live. Okay, our AutoSync project has been humming along nicely in production for a while now, but something's changed. Let's say we've added a new field to our line items. As well as our internal ID, we need to add a stock ID. Now that change is going to affect two out of our three recipes, and Richard, our builder, is going to make those edits. But as before, he can't decide on his own to update production. And again, for this demo, we'll assume we've already made this deployment to test and just show you how this will work with production. And we're using the account of Esther, our project admin. An important difference from the last time we did this is that there's now an existing version of this project already active in production. So we've developed and tested this change on our sandbox data. Now it's time to deploy it. So we just want to update the assets that we've actually changed and do it smoothly without dropping any orders in production. This time, when we prepare the deployment, you'll see that the wizard is telling us exactly which assets are going to change and which will stay the same. So Esther can make sure that this looks right and then seamlessly get these changes into production. Note that this time around, we already have our active connections in production. We haven't changed them. So there's no need to go and reconnect anything and there's no downtime. The new versions of these recipes will pick up seamlessly from the old ones. I do wanna add here, We've made a very small change to this project just to show you the workflow. But if you're reviewing a significant change to one or more recipes, you can use the visual recipe diffs feature to make sure you understand exactly what's changed. And you can check out a separate video on that feature in the links. One last thing, sometimes even with all the testing and QA that we do, it's still possible to miss something. What happens if we deploy a change to production and we break something? Don't panic. At any time, we can easily roll back to a previous deployment that we know is safe. All we have to do is navigate to the deployments tab again and find that safe deployment. This is a time when you're glad that you wrote some helpful notes. All I have to do is select deploy again and follow the wizard again. And we're back to the previous version of the project. So just as important as building the project in the first place, is the ability to manage change safely over time. Environments gives you a framework for rigorous, stable change management, all without leaving the platform. And you can look out for more releases in this area in the near future, including a built-in process to request peer reviews from other users. And that's it for now. Thank you for joining me and keep building.